and side two of Sound of the Sixties. Band one was an Elvis number one on both sides of the Atlantic. Good luck charm. Uh Elvis Presley's 17th US number one and his 11th in the UK. And we still, of course, have four requests left in this week's programme, and they'll be for records by the Mojos, Cliff Richard, then in our three in a row spot, Pink Floyd, Fairport Convention, and Shirley Collins. And finally, Joe Brown. And next, one of the early records made by the Supremes, who'd started out as the Primettes, as tribute to a male group, the Primes, who would, in the 60s, find fame as the Temptations. The Primettes issued one single on a small local label and were then signed to Berry Gordy's Motown stable where public acceptance was at first hard to find. The song was written by Berry Gordy himself in partnership with songwriter Barney Ailes and was the girl's only single to feature Florence Ballard as the sole lead singer, Buttered Popcorn. My baby
a record made in 1961 when the group became the Supremes, Diana Ross was promoted to lead singer after that record, and Florence Ballard removed into the background. And now our first side to request from Delphina Fisher of Worthing, who asks for a disc she hasn't heard for a long time, Everything's All Right by the Mojos. This was their first of three hits, all in 1964, with each disc, unfortunately, achieving a lower chart placing than its predecessor. So this number nine was followed by a 25, and the final one of the three, Seven Daffodils, only reached number 30. Liverpool group The Mojos, who'd started out in 1962 as The Nomads, with Stu James as their singer. And that brings us to a disc from the long and convoluted career of Tommy Sands. His mother was always a country music fan and gave him a guitar for Christmas when he was just seven years old. He taught himself to play, and when he was eight, got a job at a radio station in Louisiana, performing twice a week. Fast forward to 1961, when, signed to Capitol, and incidentally married to Nancy Sinatra, he made some of his best recordings, including this Paul Anker composition, The Wrong Side of Love. When I was a boy, and I was very young, I used to play ball in the gymnasium. Score to one goal. I never won one game. Oh, it bless my soul. It's a crying shame. I'm always on the wrong side. Tossed around One minute it's up Next minute it's down I just bat zero Can't get on base I keep striking out Ah, it's such a disgrace I'm always on the wrong side
Well, that was made by Tommy Sands in 1961 as his last studio date for Capital. And from that we move on to this week's song swap feature. In 1964, Dionne Warwick scored her first major UK hit with Bacharach and David's song Walk On By, which had originally been released in the US as the B-side of any old time of the day. But influential New York DJ Murray the K refused to play that recognising the B-side as the stronger of the two. Well, that same year, Aretha Franklin released her album Running Out of Fools. Aretha Franklin version of Walk On By, which had not only been a hit single for Dionne Warwick, but was also on her album Make Way for Dionne Warwick, which included nine other Bacharach and David songs and a cover of this song by Bob Merrill and Jules Stein, People, that was made famous by Barbara Streisand in the musical Funny Girl. Dionne Warwick with one of the relatively few songs she recorded around that time that was not by Bacharach and David. But now let's dip into the repertoire of Billy J. Kramer, who'd originally been Bill Ashton from Bootle in Liverpool, who was torn between 
taking a proper job with British Rail or risking everything by becoming a pop singer. Deciding on the latter course, he enlisted the help of backing group the Dakotas and changed his name to Billy J. Kramer, the J having been suggested by John Lennon, who, with Paul McCartney, wrote four of the new group's first five hits. One of their later records was written by Ronnie Scott, and although championed by pirate radio stations, it never made the national charts. It's called Neon City. <laughs> It's a neon city And the lights are pretty But nothing's real anymore To recompense an everlasting See our faces going places Fast, too fast And no one knows where roses grow in this town can say where children play in this town. It's a neon city, and the lights are pretty, but something's missing somewhere. Signs that sparkle in the dark will beckon cars to clubs and bars. City by Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. And from that to a request from Michael Edwards and Susan Wilkes, asking us to play Summer Holiday by Cliff Richard for Liz Rayburn, who's kind enough to allow Sue and Mike to stay with her for a week around this date. This was, of course, a UK number one that was the title song of one of Cliff's movies in 1963. The idea for the song apparently came to Bruce Welsh and Brian Bennett of The Shadows when they were rehearsing in an empty theatre. Bruce started singing We're All Going on a Summer Holiday No More Work for a Week or Two and Brian continued with We're Going Where the Sun Shines Brightly, We're Going Where the Sea Is Blue. As Phil the Collector comments That's how hits are born Fun and laughter on a summer holiday No more worries for me or you For a week or two We're going where the sun shines brightly We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true Everybody has a summer holiday doing things they always wanted to so we're going on a summer holiday 
to make our dreams come true. Shines brightly. We're going where the sea is blue. We've seen it in the movies. Now let's see if it's true. Everybody has a summer holiday, doing things they always wanted to. So we're going on a summer holiday to make our dreams come true. A chart-topping film title song from Cliff Richard. And next, a track from what's perhaps the most obscure album by Alexis Corner's Blues Incorporated, Sky High, which he recorded for the Tiny Spot label in the spring of 1965. Now, it wasn't released until the following year. Alongside Alexis, the line-up for this recording included Duffy Power, Alan Skidmore, Danny Thompson and Terry Cox. And we're going to hear River's Invitation. Where I've been all across the country, I've played most every town. Cause I've tried to find my baby. But nobody seen her around Nobody seen her around And if I don't find my baby Well, you know which way I'm bound, yeah Which way I'm bound A 
mid-sixties recording by Alexis Corner's Blues Incorporated, paving the way to this week's three in a row, as suggested by Terry Wilkinson of Farsley in West Yorkshire. He says that American Joe Boyd has been active for more than 40 years on the music scene in both Britain and the USA as a label owner, band manager and music and film producer, best known as being instrumental in the creation of British folk rock in the late 60s. Terry's suggestions for a three-in-a-row tribute to this talented man are first Arnold Lane by Pink Floyd that Joe produced as their first single in 1967, then from the 1969 album Legion Leaf that Joe produced with Fairport Convention, the selection is the opening track written by Sandy Denny and Ashley Hutchings, Come All Ye. And finally, another recording from 1967, English folk singer Shirley Collins. Boyd produced her album The Power of the True Love Not, and a track on it has Shirley's sister Dolly playing pipe organ, just as the tide was flowing. Arnold Lane
see you in my dreams Oh, someone took you Right out of my arms Still I feel The thrill of your charms Lips that once were mine Tender eyes that shine Well, that song dates back to the 20s when it was written by Isham Jones and Gus Kahn. Then, in 1952, it was used as the title song of a film biography of Gus Kahn starring Doris Day. But the version we just heard was a top 30 hit in the UK in 1962. I'll See You in My Dreams, as recorded by Pat Boone. And now a group which began in Hull as Peter King and the Majestics, but in 1964 changed to the edgier name of the Rats. Apparently they then recorded a version of Willie Dixon's Spoonful and pressed just a hundred copies for fans. But this, rather strangely, led to an American release on the Lorry label and subsequently an official UK issue on Columbia. In 1965, they made a gutsy but unsuccessful follow-up titled Gotta See My Baby Every Day, after which they called it a day. a marginally successful band that reformed later on with Mick Ronson on guitar. 
but little happened to them either. Now, it's surprising how often confusion arises over the correct names of musicians and singers, and here's a prime example. Producer Ron Barrett heard a 15-year-old girl named Mary Clayton sing at a Baptist church, and he knew that he had to make a record with her. Well, because of her age, her mother had to sign her contract, and Ron recorded a song by Richard Berry, I've Got My Eyes On You. But when it was released, the name on the label was spelt as Mary Clayton. There's still confusion as to her proper name. Some sources saying it's Mary because she was born on Christmas Day, while Billboard magazine lists her as Mary. However, she became a session singer, working with many top acts, including Ray Charles and the Rolling Stones. Hey, baby! So there you are, Mary, Mary or Mary Clayton, recorded in 1963. And for our final request this week, we have a letter from Sheila Flavel Martindale of Sidcup, who wants a record played for all her old school friends that attended Dick Shepherd School in Tulse Hill and her wonderful friends from St Martin's Estate from 1958 through the 60s. The record suggested by Sheila is Joe Brown's top three hit from 63, That's What Love Will Do. That yellow dress she wore when we went dancing Sunday nights That smile you'd give me the movies when they dim the lights I've tried in vain to wash the memory from my brain I can't forget you and that's what love will do That's what love will do The spins we took together on my beat out Good. 
dress she wore when we went dancing Sunday nights. That's the little beauty in the movies when they dim the lights. I try in vain to wash the memory from my brain. I Joe Brown, with a hit written by the actor Trevor Peacock, most recently famous for his creation of the No, No, Yes Man in The Vicar of Dibley. Well, our next song is a track by Love from their classic album Da Capo, which, according to lead guitarist John Eccles, was the most difficult song they ever recorded because of the strange chords involved. It's called She Comes in Colours, and it's believed that the Rolling Stones borrowed the title for part of the lyric for their song, She's a rainbow. A thought in my head, I think, of something to do. Expressions tell everything. I see one on you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Album track by Love, bringing us to the final disc on this week's show, which was performed by Johnny Burnett on his posthumously released album in 1964, The Johnny Burnett Story, and had been written by David Gates, Fool of the Year. My friends all say, how could you be so blind? I never thought she was the cheating kind I've lost my pride and now I fear That I'm the fool of the year Ring, ring the bells and spread the word around The king of fools has at last been found Let's get together and give a cheer the fool of the year Get out the blue ribbons Strike up the band Come see the biggest fool Believe me, here I stand So you can see Why 
I should get the prize Since I am the one who fell for all her lies So clap your hands and I'll shed a tear You're looking at the fool of the year So you can see why I should get the prize Since I am the one who fell for all her lies So clap your hands and I'll shed a tear You're looking at the fool of the year You're looking at the fool of the year You're looking at the fool of the year Johnny Burnett closing another edition of Sounds of the 60s, compiled and produced by Phil the Collector Swern. And this is your old mate Brian Matthew saying that's a lot for this week. See you next week. Jonathan Ross follows the news. This is BBC Radio 2, online, on digital, and on 88 to 91 FM.